back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. Today we're taking a look at an interesting device. It's a steam trap for the condensate line. And we're going to talk a little bit about why you would use it or why you would see it and then how it works. First, this particular steam trap is an Armstrong Model A3. And you can see a little bit on the data plate here. We've got Armstrong F&T Model A3. It's got a maximum pressure on the side here. I think that is supposed to be 175, but we've got 75 stamped and then we've got 175 stamped in the casting. This particular device on the outside here, we've got three ports. This one is labeled inlet and you can see it's just sort of stamped in there. This would be the outlet and then you could also use this other port as an inlet. You can see on the body here it has to be oriented a certain way. This arrow tells us that this direction has to be up when the device is operating. So why would we need a steam trap like this? This particular device would go on the condensate line of a steam system. So we would have the steam coming from the boiler, going through whatever we're using for our process, like a kettle or a water bath. Once that energy is pulled out of the steam, it condenses back to water and that outlet pipe would go into our trap. This particular trap is designed to take condensate water, which you can think of as cooled steam, push it out through this drain port, and then when the steam reaches the trap, the trap closes. So this is called a float and thermostatic, because if the float comes up, we have condensate water in there, it's going to dump, and if we're too cool, it's going to dump. And the pressure from the steam coming in on this condensate line, it's going to push that water down and through. And then gravity feed takes it out the rest of the way. The reason these are really critical is you don't want the steam flowing through the system uncontrolled, but you also don't want water sitting in your steam system where you're trying to pull that heat energy out. So to keep steam in the part of the process where you need it, you feed it in, you put a trap on the outlet, and then let the trap regulate condensate exiting the system. If this trap fails, then we have problems with steam flow. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. So again, with this being a thermostatic and float, I expect we're going to see some linkages and valving in here. You can kind of hear there's something inside there. But this one came off the scrap pile and it had already been opened up. Somebody else beat us to it. So I don't know if we have all the parts in here. We'll just have to see. So let's go ahead and get it open. you can see that everything's pretty much on this side of the assembly. We've got our float. There's really, huh, there's really not too much else on the bottom, but let's take a look at the way the casting is set up here. Let's get this gasket out of the way. So you can see that our inlet ports feed into this big cavity space, but our outlet port is not tapped into this space. It's drilled through into this little bottom passage. So as that condensate is flowing in, it's coming into this space and it's sitting in here, filling up this bottom of the cavity until it gets to the point where this float starts to do its job. So let's set this off to the side. And you can see on here we've got this device up top, which I'm assuming is the thermostat, but we'll look at that further in a second. Then we've got this ball, which is the float, and our passage back here. At any given point, we're trying to get condensate or air into this back part so that it can be pushed out that condensate line. And this is an air bleed trap. If you had air in the system, this would let it pass through until the steam got to the thermostat. Now this ball, I believe, is stainless. But let's go ahead and pull that out real quick. Yeah, so there, it is a stainless steel ball. There is something inside it. That may be actually why this is in the scrap pile. I'm going to throw this tray in here just in case a bunch of water comes out. There is 
is something inside there, but I don't know if there should be or not. I'm assuming that there should not be, and that should just have air in it. Because if it was full of liquid, you would think that would cause it to not work properly. So if we look at the way that linkage was set up, we had the little seat here, and our linkage arm, and then we had the little seat on this end. And with this assembly together, with our float down, we'd be sealed, no flow. And then as the water level rose inside the chamber, the float would lift, and we would start to get flow through into our passage here. So it would let that steam pressure push that water through until that level came back down enough for the float to drop. So that's a, just a very simple valve arrangement. And this looks totally rebuildable too. This pretty easily comes apart. So let's take a look up here. I think this is the thermostatic element. So that is a little thermostatic bellows. A little thermostatic bellows. And you can see it's got a similar seat down inside. But that thermostatic bellows is uh, like a bimetal material and it expands and contracts. So you can think about this as being open when cold and then when the steam comes down through the system and reaches the trap, it would heat up and close. But let's see here if we put heat to it, if it expands for us. Yeah, so the bellows is actually broken. You can see it's starting to expand, but you can also see that the bellows is burned through. And that area that's burned through is, is here. So it is, the bellows is starting to fail on this too. Very simple little setup. So that's pretty much the basic setup here, right? We've got a little thermostatic element. We've got a little float. And between the two of them, we're able to bleed off that condensate so that we always have steam where we need it in our, uh, in our load, whether that's a cooking device or steam heat, however it's set up. The way these are put together and the way they're rated, they have a, a maximum flow rating, so many gallons per hour that they can move through. So if you're replacing one, you always want to make sure you have the same size as what you're taking out. When we talk about how it fails, the failures are, are pretty straightforward, right? We can have a float failure where the float can't lift anymore. We can have a bellows failure where the bellow doesn't close or doesn't open correctly anymore. Either of those will keep condensate either trapped in the system or push steam into the condensate line. And either of those is considered a failure here. If you're troubleshooting one of these and you're not sure if it's working correctly, be careful about a clogged condensate line too. It is possible for this condensate line to get stopped past the steam trap and for it to look like the steam trap has failed when re really the condensate line has gotten clogged. Another important thing to remember with these is the water that's moving through a steam system may have treatments added to it. So it is important that you're careful about bleeding it out of the system. So you don't want to just take this all apart without understanding how the system is set up and what's been done to the water to treat it and preserve it and when, when it's in service in a boiler system. So that's this one. This is, a, this is a modern trap. This is something you would see on modern equipment. So we'll set that off to the side. And then I'm going to pull up here an old trap. And let's get that up. So this is an example of a very old thermostatic trap. And the thermostatic trap actually had a bellows inside it that's very similar to our modern thermostatic bellows. But in this particular case, this bellows just completely came apart. And this is actually from a steam heat system. This is not from a cooking appliance. But you can see that it's a very similar setup in that we're using that thermostatic element to open and close a valve. 
So in this one, the condensate would flow down here, and we would see this valve hold until that condensate cooled it. It would lift when it cooled, the condensate would flow through. And then as the steam came in behind that condensate and reached the bellows, the bellows would expand again and seal the valve back up. So just a very simple system. All right, well, I think that'll do it for now. Thanks for watching. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a smart care technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.